Chef Paul and welcome to my secret vanilla sponge recipe. This recipe I don't usually share, but uh, for this special occasion I, I will with you. Uh, it's the most fluffiest, flexible sponge you've ever tasted. It's very versatile, can be used for many, many things. There's a lot of ingredients, but they're all very simple. The way it's put together is very different to what you've seen before, so I look forward to sharing this with you and hope you try it. So we're gonna get started. So the first ingredient is egg whites. So we pour the egg whites into the bowl. The next thing is, again, one of my favorite ingredients, egg white powder or meringue powder. This will help strengthen the egg whites to make it very strong. So when we fold in the other ingredients, it keeps the light fluffiness and makes it very strong and keeps it light. This is one of my secrets. So to this there, we go into whisk. So we're whisking this on high speed. While this is whisking, we're gonna do another, a few other parts of the recipe. We're gonna take the oil and the milk. And we're just gonna set that aside. Now we're going to do the dry ingredients. We take the flour, the baking powder, and the salt. And we're gonna sift all that together. This is not just for removing any foreign bodies, but also to lighten the mix. Already you can see the egg whites are getting big and fluffy. So the next thing we're gonna do is start to add some sugar to help them stabilize the meringue. So we're just gonna add the sugar slowly. Okay, so Unlike lots of meringues, this one is very, very light. It's very soft, very light. So the next step, we go into pouring the egg yolks, which is very similar to the ladies' fingers. And then we're gonna fold that through the mix. If you don't have egg white powder in at this point, your meringue will collapse and you lose a lot of volume and go very watery. So this is why it's good to use. Fat is the enemy of egg whites. So if you have any fat in your bowl, when you try and whisk your meringue, you will not be able to whisk it. It will just stop. So now we have this nice, thick, fluffy mixture. We're going to add the dry ingredients in three parts, which have been sifted. So we're just gonna put that across the top. Just gently go from the bottom, folding to the top. Again, you don't have to fold all the way through. We just want to get that come mixed in because we're going to mix again and again. Okay, so now this is one of the strange parts. So what we're going to do, we have the milk and the oil. We're going to take some of the sponge mix. The reason why we do this, oil is fat, milk is fat. If we added that at the beginning, you will lose the volume and you will not be able to get the light fluffy sponge. So what we're doing now is we're just going to emulsify and mix these items together just to make like a smooth paste. So this way we can fold this easily into here. So these are two things you don't usually find in this style of recipe. So then we're gonna pour that back in and then we're going to carefully Fold that through so everything is combined. Really nicely mixed, it's smooth, everything's folded through. And you see we still have the bowls full. We haven't lost all that air, which is so, so important for light fluffy cakes. It's finished mixing, the consistency is silky smooth, light and fluffy. This will ensure that the cake is the same. Now we're going to focus on the, the tray. I'm just using a tray with deep sides because I want to make the cake quite thick when I spread it. I put a silica mat in the bottom. You can use paper. The challenge with baking paper is a lot of them will crinkle up when they have moisture put on top. So I recommend using silica mats because you can use these again and again and long term it saves paper, helps the environment. So with this, we're going to spray the outside of the pan 
to make sure it's not going to stick and then a very light coating on the silicone. Okay, so now we're going to pour the mix. And we can basically spread it out. Again, you can do this one very thin. You can do it very thick. We're going to do it a little bit on the thicker side today. Okay, so afterwards we can just go and try and level it out. And just keep rotating the tray, just spin until you've got it as level as possible. If this side is thick and this side is thin, by the time this is cooked, this will be burnt. Or this will be cooked and this will be raw. So it's important to try and get your cakes as, as level as possible before you go going to bake them. So this one I want to cook very hot, very fast, because we want to roll it up. Reason for that, if you cook it hot and fast, you'll keep the moisture in the cake, and it'll be much more flexible to roll. Now, not every time and every temperature you can be given by a chef unless you have exactly the same ingredients, the same equipment, and the same exact oven. So this is where you need to understand how to work out your recipes. Okay, the next thing is we're gonna preset the oven for the, the jelly roll cake first. So we're gonna cook it hot and fast. We're gonna set the oven at 180 degrees and we're gonna start with 15 minutes because this is the first time I've done it in this pan, in this mix. So we're gonna experiment together. So now we're going to cook the vanilla sponge cake in the jelly roll sheet. So we're gonna set the timer. We're gonna to go to set. We're gonna to go to time. We're gonna to go to 15 minutes. 180 degrees centigrade. We're gonna go fan speed one. Once we hit start, the oven will start to preheat and it will let us know when the oven's ready for cooking. So as you can hear, the oven is calling, it's ready. Time to put the cake inside. cake is ready the timer will go off the door will automatically open and it will inform us the cake is done so the cake is actually done five minutes quicker than I anticipated this is the first time of using this particular model of Unox before I cook this in a conventional oven a normal oven without the fan it took much, much longer. This has only taken 10 minutes to cook a thick cake, perfectly consistently even golden brown. You can tell by pushing on it, it's got a nice spring, it's ready to cook. You can try it with a skewer if it comes out clean, the, you know, the, the normal way, and it will be fine. Now you have to understand, the important thing is, is about the oven, it's okay for me to give you a recipe, but if you have the same ingredients, you have the same pan, you have the same oven, everything could be perfect in the perfect environment. However, it's very important for people to understand how to adjust their personal recipes, own recipes, so they can adjust. So, like I say, I knew the temperature, 180 degrees. I put it on for 15 minutes, but I'm checking. After 10 minutes, I looked, it's ready. I've checked it for done this, it's ready. I've taken it out of the oven. I can write that time. Now, next time I make this, I use the same amount of mix in the same pan. I have a standardized recipe, but be prepared to adjust your everyday recipes. If you've been making cakes for 15, 20 years in the same oven, this is the time when you need to learn how to adjust your recipes to perfect your recipes now in this oven and with much superior results. So the vanilla sponge in the sheet for the jelly roll is now chilling down. So while that's chilling down, we're gonna to start to prepare the white chocolate honey whipped ganache we prepared earlier. So as you can see, the ganache is now thickened slightly. It's been in the fridge for around 12 hours. And all we're going to do now is whip it like whipped cream. We're going to pour it into the machine and whip it to the texture we want. And then we're ready to go. So we take the white chocolate honey whipped ganache. We're just going to pour it into the machine. Now I recommend to whip this when you need to use it. If you put this in the fridge afterwards, it will start to firm up and get quite hard. So whip what you need as you need it. It's better to stay in the fridge as a liquid. Okay, so we're gonna close the machine and then we're gonna turn it on and whisk like whipped cream. We wanna whisk until it's like semi-stiff. If you whip too far, it will split. Okay, so when it starts to thicken, it thickens fast, very, very fast. So as you can see now, 
It's nice and thick, but super, super creamy and smooth. Now, the great thing about the white chocolate whipped ganache, with a whipped cream, it will eventually fall down and break and collapse. With the chocolate, it adds the stability. And also the richness and the smoothness. So it's a, it's a real decadent treat. So we're just gonna basically just give it a slight mix to make sure everything's mixed through. But now if you see how smooth it is, and it's just like something you wanna eat. All right, so the cream is ready. Okay, so now we're going to make the vanilla sponge cake jelly roll. So this is the cake we cooked earlier. It's very, very soft, very, very flexible. So what we're going to do now is just make sure it's released. Okay, so now we're going to flip it over. And then we'll remove the mat. Okay, so now we have the jelly roll. Okay, so this one, again, you can make it thin, you can make it thick, you can make it any way you want to do, okay? So we're going to then take a thin layer of the cream, the white chocolate whipped ganache that we made, and we're going to spread this over the top. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it's still gonna taste the same. So now we're going to add the strawberries. Okay, now this is done. What we're going to do is just take the palette knife. We're going to push down on the strawberries. Okay, and then we're gonna add a little bit more cream on top. So we're just gonna cut off the top edge. Now we're going to, using the help of the paper, we're going to start to roll this roll. Now this is a very big, big roll. What we're going to do now is push the paper over the top, take the ruler at the bottom, and we're going to hold the bottom of the paper so the top will slide back. And we're going to compress the roll so everything inside gets squashed together and there's no gaps or air inside, it's just all cake and fruits. Now take this off, the paper. We have the nice roll. At this point, we can cut the cake and then finish to decorate. Now we've, we've shaped and basically pushed the jelly roll into shape. We're going to cut it to the length that you desire. So we're going to trim the end off. We're just using hot water. But you can see it's super, super fluffy and super light. And again, you can make this thinner, you can make it thicker, you can make it however you wish. We're going to cut this in half, carefully lift it onto the plate. We will decorate with the cream, same cream that's inside the cake. We will pipe. Onto the top. And then decorate with some strawberries, which we will leave the green on to give it a nice decoration. There you have basically a white chocolate strawberry shortcake in a jelly roll formation. But you can see super, super soft, fluffy, rich, decadent cream, fresh strawberries, and it's baked to perfection in the Unox. Mm -hmm.